Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a beer that is a three-way collaboration, two Swedish breweries and one American and all three of them seem to have a very, very good reputation. The two Swedish breweries I've encountered before, the American one is a new one to me but as I say they carry a very, very good reputation. So today we're going to have a look at a beer that was released through the small parties at the start of February here in Sweden in Seistenbolaget and this beer is called the Miami Meow. So it's a double IPA coming in at 8% ABV and it's a collaboration between Stieg Marriott and All In Brewing, both of whom are from Gothenburg and also Jay Wakefield Brewing, who are from Miami over in Florida. Now as I say, I've reviewed a number of beers from Stieg Marriott and some from All In. It's been a while actually since I reviewed my last beer from All In, so that's something I need to change over the next little while, but this is my very, very first encounter with Jay Wakefield Brewing, but they are a brewery who carry a very very good reputation when it comes to IPAs and sour beers so I'm very curious to try my first beer involving them and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it too. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries involved here if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website it's a link to my other reviews that I've done already from Steve Barrett's and All In Brewing and a link that will take you to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Jay Wakefield Brewing like I said my first encounter with them at all there's all the usual so Social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you and one for all the American beers. This one will appear in both because there's breweries from both sides of the Atlantic in this one. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. View. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Stieg Berriot's Brewery first off then, since they are the home brewery with this one if you like. So on to my brewery notes then. So as I've told you before, Stieg Berriot's Brewery are based in Gothenburg and they were founded by Niels Hulkratz and Richard Simonsson and the pair own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is Barstino and Hagebjörn's Cafe which are located on Lina Gatan in the city and these both opened back in 2007. So originally the idea was to brew a few beers that they could sell in the bars and this led to them eventually kegging the beers and selling them to other pubs and eventually on to bottling them which started back in November of 2014. So their original beers were mainly English and German styles but of course in more recent years they've expanded to brewing the more American, uh, kind of famous American New England style IPAs. But their original head brewer was Ole Anderson who's the co-owner of OO Brewing and he's focusing on that venture now and he was replaced for a, for a period of time by Barnaby Struber who was one of the vice presidents at Three Floyds in Münster in Indiana over in America. But they very recently opened up a new brewery at Partihalarna where they brew 5,000 litres at a time and they're also beginning to work on some sour beers as well. They also started selling their beers in 440 milliliter cans so the likes of the uh, the new and improved GBG, the, uh, the West Coast IPA and I think a few other ones are now in the 440 milliliter American pint sized cans and they're able to export a lot more with this now as well well since they've changed around. But they now have a brew team of Ollie Banks who was formerly working for Beavertown over in London and they also have Lucas Munroyd who previously worked for uh, All In Brewing as well. I think he moved over there maybe in late 2017, sometime around that to join uh, Steve Berrios. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about them just now. These guys of course are very, very famous for uh, the GBG Beer Week beer, the Amazing Haze is another very, very good one and uh, stuff like that too. So this was a brewery that really kind of helped build up, uh, really built its reputation on uh, producing Swedish versions of the New England IPAs from America. So if you get the chance to try some of their beers in particular, I would recommend Amazing Haze, but the new and improved uh, GBG Beer Week is a pretty damn good beer as well, I have to say. But they're pretty they're pretty well versed in whatever style it is they actually decide to go for. But if you want to learn a little bit more about these guys, check out the brewery website in the description below. And of course, you can follow them on Facebook and uh, Instagram and things like that. And that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there. So anyway, over the Atlantic then, to G. Wakefield Brewing because this is the second one on the list. So this brewery are based in the Wynwood district in Miami in Florida and the company is owned by John Wakefield who started home brewing back in 2005. Previously he had studied for a master's degree in accounting and he'd also taken some kind of culinary classes as well because he was big into cooking and trying different foods and also trying different beers and things like that as well. But he continued to expand further into the world of home brewing 
uh, competing in many competitions, winning many different medals and things like this. And eventually, he decided that he wanted to open up his own brewery and turn professional. So they opened up the brewery officially in January of 2015 after using the crowd brewed format to raise $55,000 for all the equipment and the premises for the brewery. And he was one of the first brewmasters to actually do this, which is quite impressive. But at the moment, the brewery is around 3,800 uh, square feet, which I guess is somewhere in the region of 1,000 square metres, if I'm converting that properly. Um, but they also have a 15 barrel brew house with a second boiling kettle for their sour beer program as well and in particular these guys are known for producing some very nice IPAs and also sour beers as well. Some of their sour beers that they have are rated within the top 10 of the particular style in the world. I think it was a Berliner, one of their Berliner Weisses is rated as one of the best uh, Berliner Weisses in the world and there's also another one that might be a Goza that's rated as one of the best Gozas in the world as well. So if you like your sour beers and you like your IPAs then Jay Wakefield Brewing are one that you definitely want to check out and it does seem to be that the name is getting spread about a little bit more here in Europe with collaborations and stuff like that so maybe just maybe within the next year or two we might start to see some of the Jay Wakefield Brewing beers exported over here to uh, Sweden and Denmark and things like that so we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how we go on but that's all you really need to know about them just now they do have a tap room on site that you can go and uh, try all the different beers I think it's somewhere in the region of 15 or 20 taps that they have there but you can check out the brewery website in the description below you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that and again that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on, tap lists at the tap room and uh, all the different beer releases and stuff like that too. So yeah, on to the last of the three breweries then, last but not least All In Brewing. So All In Brewing is quite an interesting one, there's eight people actually running this brewery including three brewers but they start, were started up in 2012 by Pella Frost and they do have plans to start their own brewery but at the moment they're contract brewing or client brewing, however you want to call it at various other breweries in the Gothenburg area. So in their early years they travelled around Europe making uh, collaboration beers with a lot of other breweries, the likes of Tokalmato in Italy, Lervig in Norway and stuff like this, but more recently they have actually focused on brewing their beers in Sweden. They started brewing their beers with uh, with Brewski in Helsingborg uh, and one of their, bre their brewers, Lucas, who is now of course with Stieg Berets, he worked full time at Brewski brewing both the All In beers and the Brewski beers and then later they moved up to, uh, to brew their beers at the West Coast Brewery as well, or West Coast Beersmiths I think they're actually now called uh, and he was, do he was doing the same, brewing the West Coast Beersmith beers for a period of time as well, but the three brewers and Lucas are uh, Lucas, Victor and Andreas Lucas of course has since moved on and they've always been into the big kind of uh, American fruity IPAs and stuff like this, but they also like the Imperial, Imperial Stouts, but Victor and Andreas are the original guys, well Lucas he originally was headhunted from another brewery and was the head brewer for a period of time, but as I say he has since moved on to Steve Bears but they were working as a team to create a lot of the beers uh, and in 2015 they were voted as one of the top 100 brewers in the world by Rate Beer which is pretty impressive and I have to say I have been impressed by the standard of beers that I've had from uh, All In Brewing when I've been here. Every year they uh, open up their own, they have their own beer festival as well which is called the All In Beer Fest and some of the All In guys also have a share in uh, the Gothenburg Brewers Bar as well, which is pretty cool. They do that together with Dugasberg. They do have two or three of those now throughout Gothenburg in uh, different areas, and those are bars that I definitely need to go and check out as well. I've never actually managed to get up to Gothenburg and explore it properly since I've lived here in Sweden. So again, that is something that I really need to do. And in particular, Gothenburg is the beer city when it comes to uh, to Sweden these days. There's you know there's a ridiculous number of craft breweries opening up up there, and a lot of them are starting to export their beers and get them out there a little bit more to really make a name for a Gothenburg craft beer which is always awesome but All In Brewing are one of the guys that have been around for a little bit uh, for a little bit longer. Their beers can be a little bit harder to get, you don't find them all that often, you do have to order them spe uh, especially through uh, say Stemblaga but maybe they are a bit more widely available in the stores up in Gothenburg too but another very very interesting brewery that have a reputation that is well earned in my experience. But yeah that's all you really need to know about them, if you want to learn a little bit more you can check out the brewery website and follow them on Instagram and Facebook as I've mentioned before and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on. So yeah, that's enough of the brewery notes. Let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So just to tell you about this one again, this one is an 8% double IPA and it's hot with Simcoe, Laurel, Citra, Victoria's Secret and Mosaic. Laurel, of course, I believe is an English hop that's well known for, um, they call it like a super noble hop. It's slightly higher in alpha acid. Uh, 
uh, alpha acid content if you like but it's got a very nice kind of distinctive herbal and floral character as well as some citrusy notes and Victoria's Secret of course is almost like a baby brother of uh, the Galaxy Hop it's got a little bit of passion fruit and, uh, and things like that and a little bit of pineapple from what I remember too another Australian hop uh, but Citra, Simcoe and Mosaic we do know quite a lot about but that's all you need to know about the beer let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then there's a little quick look at the artwork for you on this one the Miami Meow a cat that looks um, something a little bit like out of a Tim Burton movie or something like that I'm not quite sure I always butcher the artwork on these things there you can see the three brewery symbols on the back of the can there and this one it's a very it's one of these very thin um, sort of tall, thin, tall, uh, 330 milliliter cans. Some breweries seem to be doing these these days, and I'm not sure exactly what the reason for that is. But we'll get it out nonetheless, and we'll get on with the tasting. Like I said, an 8% double IPA, this one. So there we go. No. I do quite like that, actually. It does give you a, fairly little, a fair bit of an aggressive pour and a nice head. You can see the head in this one in particular has come out nice and uh, bumpy and I will tell you something actually I've only had one or two beers with the laurel hop but you can smell just as this one's pouring out you really can smell a little bit of that kind of herbal quality that you would that I've heard you can expect and from what I remember expect uh, having with the laurel hop before as well um, but yeah if I hold this beer up to the light this one is actually quite an orangey yellow colour there's a solid half finger of a frothy I would say kind of cream white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look uh, pretty nice, I have to say. And not, nothing particularly surprising about this beer when you consider that it is a New England IP. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see the beer is pretty much opaque, but it's nowhere near as hazy as you can get from some of these uh, New England IPAs. So yeah, looks really, really nice this one. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this. Oh, yeah. This one actually leans towards the kind of fruity, juicy side of thing. But we'll just kind of let my... We'll, Focus on the other parts of the beer in the in the beginning. So the malt base is quite simple. You can get this nice sort of wheaty, white bready quality to it. It's got a little touch of oaty creaminess in there and some biscuity notes too, um, which is pretty much what you would expect from one of these IPAs. I would say that the malt base is a little touch sweeter in this one. It does have a little bit of a, an almost caramelly note to it as well, but more of a kind of biscuity, grainy sweetness. It reminds me a little bit of McVitie's Digestives. I'm not sure how good a descriptor that is for the Americans, but I know that we get McVitie's digestives over here in uh, Sweden. I always, I used to have a couple of those with my dad back home in Scotland, but um, yeah, with this one, it, this one is quite a sweet uh, malt base, I would say, really leaning towards that almost slightly caramelly, biscuity side of things. So I like what they've managed to uh, to do with the, the malt base in this one. The green side of the hops, you can pick up. There's a little tiny touch of earthiness in there. The mosaic will be giving you a little bit of that, and also the laurel will be giving you that too. You can pick up that nice kind of herbal quality that I was mentioning earlier from the laurel. But the hoppy side of things, the green side of the hops for me, really leans towards a nice... Um, a really nice sort of uh, grassy quality to the beer as well. So I really like um, how this one goes together. The, the the base of this beer, if you like, the backbone of the beer is very solid, but it's also got this really nice kind of fruity juiciness on top of it. You can pick out some of these tangerine oranges from the mosaic hop. You've got a little bit of a passion fruity note in there as well, which is coming both from the Simcoe and from the Victoria's Secret a little bit. There's maybe a little touch of pineapple in there, which you I remember you get a little bit from Victoria's Secret. And you can also pick out the nice mangoes, which are the, the doing of the citra, if you like. So there's a lot of nice uh, juicy notes in this one. The passion fruit um, is quite mild in this one I would say. It does sit in the background a little bit and it comes across as more of a juicy passion fruit rather than being a quite pungent one as it can sometimes be. But the mangoes are definitely there and the tangerine oranges are uh, very very nice as well. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we are going to have a taste of this one now. So this one is the Miami Meow Double IPA, a collaboration between Stieg Berriot and All In Brewing from Gothenburg here in Sweden and Jay Wakefield Brewing, who are from Miami over in Florida. I believe, actually, this might be my first beer that I've ever tried uh, that involves the Miami region in some, uh, some capacity. So... That's quite cool as well. But let's get stuck into this one then. The Miami Meow from Steve Barrett's All In and G Wakefield Brewing. Let's get stuck in. Slangin Skull. Yeah. 
Yeah. That one is quite nice, I have to say. It's, um, it actually, it's no, it's, it is a New England, but it's leaning a little bit more. It does have a little touch of a more West Coasty feel. To me, this is striking me as one of these beers that's almost got a little, it has a little bit of West Coast character to it, just because of the slightly sweeter and less creamy nature of the malt base. And as I said, I've been missing some of these, uh, you know, the West Coast IPAs. I wish more, more of the new breweries that are popping up would have a little go at the West Coast IPAs rather than just focusing on the New England ones. And this to me is definitely one of these beers that's trying to bring the West Coast uh, mouthfeel back a little bit, but it's still sticking mainly to, to, to the uh, the New England flavour, albeit you do have a little bit more of that malty um, sweetness in there. But to me, this is a, a nice beer. What I will say is, I did check out the rating that this one had early on, and it's not one of the higher rated beers from uh, any one of these breweries, in fact. It's not one of the, high, the more highly rated beers that any of the three of them have produced, but I certainly think this is, is a nice, pretty solid beer, I have to say. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. In fact, my first impression of it is that it's ridiculously um, easy drinking for an 8% double IPA. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think the maltiness in some ways is being a little bit um, aided by I think it's being aided a little bit by the, the laurel hop in this one. You really can feel the influence of that hop in this beer and the sort of earthy and herbal qualities coming out of it too, which is it's really interesting. It really, I mean, I've not had, as I say, I've not had too many beers with that in it, but you really can feel the influence that that hop's having in this beer. So just pay attention to the kind of back sides of your palate when you taste this one. But let's try and go through the flavour logically with this beer as we always do. So for this one, I would say the middle of your palate is kind of blanketed with this nice, smooth, uh, white, bready quality. It's more of a kind of pale malty note, this one, rather than being wheaty and smooth as I've had before. You do get a little bit of a a kind of grainy note to the beer as well. The middle of your palate dries out a little bit and you start to get more graininess to this one. In the very centre of your palate there's a little touch of a sweet caramel. At the same time it's quite light. It's maybe more of a kind of caramel wafer uh, and definitely some kind of sweet biscuity notes in there as well which is um, which is quite nice I have to say. Um, so yeah, I, I like how that, that malt base goes together. It does have a little touch of graininess to it, but it's got a nice bit of sweetness. And the sweetness, of course, the sweet caramelly biscuit sort of thing is something that you would expect more of a West Coast IPA as opposed to, uh, to a New England IPA. Yeah. I like, I do like the way the malt base comes out in this one, uh, but if you've watched the channel before, you will know that I'm a bit of a stickler for uh, IPAs. For IPAs, just have a little bit of a sweeter caramelly malt base to them. I really like it when you can get that balance in there quite nicely. So to me, the malt base in this one is leaning a little bit towards the West Coasty side of things, but you can pick up some of the more New England flavours uh, in this one too, which is nice. Hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little chunk of earthiness there. As I mentioned earlier, that will come a little bit from the mosaic, but also a little bit from the laurel. And as you come further forward on the sides of your palate, you can feel the sort of herbal influence of the laurel coming out a little bit more. And you almost just get, you get a little bit more of a kind of floral, um, aromatic quality to this beer towards the front corners of the palate too. Then round the very front curve of the tongue, you've got a nice lighter um, grassiness there, which is nice. But that, the, the laurel hop with this one is, is playing a big role, I would say. The fruity juiciness is nice in this one, but the things that are really striking me is the, the slight sweetness to the malt base that this beer has and also that sort of herbal and um, slightly earthy backbone that the beer has too and for me that beer, the beer it gets a thumbs up for that i like the way that the flavors are kind of um playing with each other in this one it's it, it's got a good kind of interaction uh, going on there behind the front curve of the palate of course that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer and for me this one has a good mix of things. It's it, The further you go into the aftertaste, I'm finding it's leaning a, a bit towards the tangerine oranges that you would get from the mosaic. But earlier on, you've got the passion fruits from the Victoria Secret and the Simcoe coming out. And you've also got a bit of the mango there um, from the Citra too. So in the beginning, I think it's a bit more of a tropical beer, this. But the further you go into the aftertaste, the more it leans uh, towards the tangerine oranges. That said, though, the mangoes, I think, come out a little bit more as well.
yeah, I definitely say that the mangoes um, come out a little. They they sort of they they start off there. The passion fruit comes in at the start, and the further you go into the flavour, more and more of the mangoes come out, and then it really gives you this nice oily. Um, juicy tangerine. I don't think I've seen the mosaic uh, come across as quite as oily as it has before um, and as it does in this beer I should say. The, the, the mosaic tangerine oranges for me feel significantly more oily than uh, they have in some of the other beers I've had. Mosaic is a very popular hop these days and um, I've always found that Amarillo if you want orangey flavours, the uh, Amarillo is the one to pick if you want a nice big oily orange, I would say. Um, so it's interesting to see the mosaic show another kind of lighter side of its character. If you go towards the very kind of front tip of your tongue, if you like, I think there's a little touch of blueberry coming out of this one, and maybe even a little touch of uh, lime as well, which is one of the complexities you can get from citra. I always find if you've got mosaic and citra in a beer, they give you these lovely complexities the further into uh, the aftertaste that you go but for me this is a very very nice IPA and it's definitely one of these ones that combines the New England um, flavours with the West Coast but to me the mouthfeel and the sweetness of the malt base make this one lean a little bit more towards the West Coast side of things and I've missed that, I have really have missed these slightly sweeter malt bases as opposed to the big kind of creamy wheaty ones so I like what they've done here and um, whether it's you know they've intended that is that interpretation or you know, being a sort of hybrid of west and east coast I'm not quite sure but the main thing is uh, that it's a good beer and you know you can't really ask for much more if three brews like this come together and do a bad beer you'd be a bit worried but to me they've pulled off something that I think goes together quite well and the laurel hop influence on this is um, the unique point if you like for the of me uh, for me with this beer so if you want something a little bit more unusual and something that's going to make you think a little bit then I think this is one that you are going to enjoy and I've certainly enjoyed reviewing this one for you particularly um, because of the slightly sweeter malt base that this beer has uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then I'd say mid-bodied beer carbonation is very very smooth the mouthfeel is leaning more towards the oily side of things uh, the IBU count on this beer I want to say this one is kind of in the region of 30 IBUs, it's not going to blow your head off in terms of its bitterness at all. Um, as I say, the malt base has a good balance between smoothness and sweetness, but it leans a little bit more towards the sweeter side of things if it's meant to be a New England IPA, and it's also got a lovely big oily but juicy and um, fruity character to it as well. So yeah, if you get this one, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, and if you like these sort of hybrid West Coast, East Coast IPAs, and this is one that you're certainly going to enjoy but three very good breweries involved in this and they've produced quite an interesting beer in my mind the unique point really is the use of that uh, laurel hop as well which gives you some really unusual earthy and kind of herbal qualities but let's leave it at that for this this one was the Miami Meow a double IPA coming in at 9% ABV from uh, Steve Barrett's and Alden in Gothenburg and with Jay Wakefield from Florida over in America really cool beer this one and I'm glad that I was able to review it so once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favourite beers are from Steve Barrett's Alden and Jay Wakefield and I'm sure we'll return to all three of these breweries in the fairly near future but thank Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. The Miami Meow double IPA from Steve Barrett's and all in, in uh, Gothenburg here in Sweden and Jay Wakefield Brewing from Miami over in Florida in America. Until the next time, slander just now and I'll catch you guys later. Let's go.